understand that, Tim. I do hope you've had something better to do with your time over the last 18 uh, months. Anyway, uh, it's good to see all of you again, whether you're a bulldog or a rebel bear, a city tiger, a country tiger, a bingo tiger, a commodore, a volunteer, or just a UT grad doing court ordered community service work. <laughs> a hog or an Arkansas fan, uh, we're going to have a good time together for the next four months. Father Veron, it's really great to see you again. I hope you're over Notre Dame's 42-14 to 14 loss to Alabama, the national championship. Talk about a winter of discontent. I suspect you, like most Irish fans, uh, got caught up uh, in the media's presentation of how great the Crimson Tide were. In fact, I remember a Dan Walken article in USA Today in December that said something to the effect that warned Alabama because Notre Dame was built like an SEC team. And of course after the game we all found out the SEC team they were built like was Tennessee. <laughs> I love it. I love okay, we're going we're we're to try this. This is in honor of Dr. Phil because he was a co-winner. Why did the Tennessee linebacker cross Pat Summit Boulevard? To get to an advanced class in quantum mechanics. See, those jokes don't work, Father. I mean, uh, uh, Dr. Sherman, I try them. Uh, all right, although, uh, as Greg said, uh, David and uh, John David and Bill put together a great speakers list, their usual lineup of terrific speakers. I know some of you were disappointed that your alma mater or at least the school you most closely identify with, uh, is not represented on this year's list, and a lot of you wanted to know why it's not. So let's put this to bed once and for all. The University of Phoenix does not have a head coach. <laughs> uh, of course, tonight we've got one of the, one of the great uh, and insightful masters of the uh, game of college football, Tony Barnhart. Let's hear it for Tony. If you were here last year, you remember that Tony predicted the SEC Network and uh, predicted how they would uh, get out of their contract with S with uh, ESPN by, uh, in effect, pa uh, partnering with ESPN, and that's what happened. So I'm sure we'll get some more insight tonight, and I'm going to just ask a couple of questions as we go along, Tony, that I hope you'll address during your presentation, uh, bringing your great wisdom to bear. Uh, following Tony... Uh, next year, next week, will be second year head coach Q Freeze. He'll be here at Chickasaw next Monday night. Don't oh, I say he'll be here. Greg Cotton has been trying to uh, email him to confirm that his email box is always full. See, so you, you probably don't remember, uh, in January, Coach Freeze uh, sent a tweet telling anyone with evidence of recruiting violations to email the university's compliance department. <laughs> Well, the school got 85 emails, just over half of which came from an, from an anonymous source called Tinso. Uh, what I like about this time of year is that everyone has concerns, uh, whether it's the white staff not being able to hold on the ball, uh, but everybody has concerns. Uh, Texas coach Mac Brown has concerns about Nick Saban. Uh, Coach Brown uh, said at uh, Big 12 Media Days that he thinks Alabama's recent success is due in part to having one of the largest support staffs in the country, and he wants to get the rule changed to limit yeah, well the number done. of non-coaching staff members allowed in college football. Uh, then, of course, Nick Saban is concerned about the speed of play at Ole Miss and Thank Auburn you. and whether that might harm some of his uh, of Alabama uh, linemen and defensive backs. Barry Brunetti at Ole Miss, uh, backup quarterback, has concerns about whether he can recognize a blitz if it's disguised as a yo-yo. 
And, and finally, I have concerns as to why the uh, Rebel Hotline, which I was listening to on the way over here, is not the Rebel Growl Hotline. It just doesn't seem right to me. If I could digress just a second, I, I, a lot, are many of you worried about the economy? I, I certainly know I still am. Uh, show of hands out there as to how many of you just give it up looking for jobs. Um, anyway, the U.S. job market hit a real bump in July and only added 160,000 jobs instead of the 182,000 jobs economists had predicted. And that's, you know, aside from that being a bad, uh, a bad job growth report, what's really disturbing is when you drill down inside that, more than a fourth of those 162,000 new jobs were part-time assistants hired to Nick Saban. <laughs> now, one of the big storylines in 2013 will be how the new head coaches in the SEC perform. Uh, we've got Brett, is it Bolivia? How do you pronounce that? Bolivia. Brett Bolivia at Arkansas, Gus Malzahn at Auburn, who apparently felt he accomplished all his goals at Arkansas State in one season and moved on to another challenge. And finally, Mark Stoops at Kentucky. And yes, I know UT also has a new head coach. But UT coaching changes are what the media calls a recurring storyline. <laughs> it's really not that easy to write this stuff. Uh, just a few other things that, that I think Tony might address. A number of college coaches are pursuing or uh, pushing the NCAA to allow some form of revenue sharing with scholarship athletes, particularly football and basketball players. This is another example of how the rest of college football is just beginning to catch up with the SEC. <laughs> Over the years, a number of SEC teams have been accused of revenue sharing with athletes. Uh, Tony, this is something I don't understand. Maybe you can help me with it. I don't understand the fuss the NCAA is making about Johnny Manziel and the alleged selling of his autographs. Isn't that something college football should really be celebrating? I mean, after all, here's a young Aggie football player who after just two years of college level classes at Texas A&M could sign his name in <laughs> cursive letters. <laughs> now I want to recognize Steve and uh, Harold. Um, the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, the SEC, and the Big 12 have agreed to a six-year contract beginning in 2014. Uh, something we're all going to be happy about. The new arrangement substantially improves the Liberty Bowl selection priority. But it isn't going to be cheap. We should all be aware of that. The Liberty Bowl will boost its total payout to about $4.8 million. Is that right, Harold? about higher than $4.8 million. Well, now, just so you can understand how much money, $4.8 or million dollars or something higher does, that's almost as much as UT pays each year to its former football coaches. <laughs> and that's not gonna be the only, uh, the only uh, consequence of raising that Liberty Bell payout. Liberty Bell ticket prices will also be going up. Right, uh, Steve? Now, I know for a lot of you, price point is an issue. You may not feel you can continue to pay the new ticket price and sit in the touchdown club section. Don't worry. Harold is already working on a new group discount for club members that will get you in almost free. Free being a relative term. And and you get a special shirt for the game and a catchy group name, the Touchdown Club Concessionaires. <laughs> On to some other topics I think Tony will probably talk about. The uh, Ninth Circuit of Appeals recently affirmed the lower court ruling that video game maker Electronic Arts Inc. has no First Amendment right to use the likeness of former college athletes without their permission or compensation. So this is going to allow former college stars, stars to file a class action uh, seeking compensation from Electric Arts and possibly the NCAA. However, the same, uh, same court tossed out former Hall of Famer Jim Brown's lawsuit against Electric Arts. 
Apparently, the Eighth Circuit is less sympathetic to the claims of athletes who were paid to perform than to the claims of amateurs. Now, that's, that's a subtle legal nuance, but it could prove problematic for Alabama football players seeking to join the class action. <laughs> And uh, just a couple of other things. Uh, I think we're all, all safety conscious now in college football. And as, as part of the new student athlete health and well-being initiative uh, to reduce the chance of TBIs, that's traumatic brain injury, the Pac-12 is limit, limiting its conference teams to two full contact practices a week this year. Now, although the SEC has no policy at this time, UT announced plans to reduce the risk of brain-related stress for its players by limiting contact with classwork to two days a week. <laughs> <laughs> We're that, Tennessee. <laughs> and, and finally, uh, Florida linebacker uh, Antonio Morrison was arrested earlier this year and charged with disorderly barking at a police dog. <laughs> In dismiss, dismissing the charges, the uh, state attorney said, I quote, the dismissal was based on a lack of evidence to sustain the charges and the inappropriateness of pursuing court action against Morrison or any other Florida football player. According to the final police report, it was merely a case of mistaken identity. Morrison thought he was barking at a Georgia cheerleader. Thank you. <laughs>